Terrence Washington, the president and founder of the Orlando Chess Club. And we are returning to our series called Supporting Our Schools, where we provide free content for our Central Florida schools so that they can make their chess players into champions and we can help mold their young men and young women into more well-rounded individuals. We, we, our goal is to change lives through the promotion, teaching, and competition of chess. And we really truly believe that chess has many beneficial aspects such as humility, discipline, hard work, vigilance, teaching children how to persevere when things are difficult. Focus is a big thing. Um, you could play 40 good moves in chess over a couple hours and make one bad move, move and ruin your entire game. Uh, we view chess in the same way that most people view martial arts. It teaches these life skills that help young women and men become better individuals. So we feel the higher skill level that the children achieve, the more well-rounded they can become because there are so many lessons people learn in chess. In this particular lesson, we are focusing on the king and rook versus king checkmate. In our last video, we focused on the king and queen versus king checkmate. This is slightly more difficult, but the same thing arises, that if we have this end game against anyone in the world and we know what we're doing, we will always win, which is a very comforting feeling to have. So let's get right into this end game. So just like the previous end game, if we want to checkmate the opposing king, we must make sure the king gets driven to the edge of the board, okay? Doesn't necessarily matter which edge of the board we are going to, but we have to drive the king to the edge of the board, okay? Now, in order to do that, we must use, unlike our previous example, where we could just use the queen to drive the king to the edge of the board and then only then bring in our own queen, we must use both of our pieces together in tandem to drive the opposing king to the edge of the board. The best way to do it is using the method, what I call, and many chess players call, the box, okay? So my first move would be here, and this would create a box that the white king would be trapped in. So as you can see, the white king can never cross this line or this line, and of course, the edge of the board creates the other two sides of the boxes. Sorry, I'm having a little technical difficulties here with my, my arrows. So if we look at the boxes, as you can see, the king can not escape the box. It can't escape the box on the top and the right, obviously, because that's the edge of the board, and it can't escape here and here because of the placement of the rook, okay? Now, our goal is to make the box smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, we cannot do that with the rook alone. We must use the king because the rook will need protection. Case in point, let's say white moves here. If we were to just move our rook away, then we're sort of abandoning our plan that we started with and we're not making much progress. So what you can do is simply protect the rook. Now, whichever way the king goes, your job is to make the box smaller. So if the king goes this way, let's move here. Now we can see the box is here and here. Okay, we've gotten a little bit smaller, okay? Let's say the king moves back this way. What we can do is we can bring our king up, okay? If white is smart, they'll stay in the center of the board because they can't be checkmated in the center of the board with these two pieces. So they'll stay in the center of the board as long as they possibly can. I will bring my king up again. Again, the king will be needed to support the rook when the rook makes the box smaller. At this particular time, I can't really make the box much smaller in a 
valuable way that's consistent with what we've been doing. So let me just bring my king up. The white king will try to stay in the center. Let's say he moves here. Now I will move my rook here. Again, making the box smaller. As you can see, we are making progress, okay? Now let's say he attacks our rook. Let's defend our rook. Let's say he backs up. What are we going to do? When we can, make the box smaller. Now we have here and here. The box started, the box started here and here. And now look at the progress we made. Now we are here and here. The box is smaller. Simple concept. If the rook moves back, let's make the box smaller. If the rook moves over, let's bring our king up. He tries to stay in the center of the board. Let's bring our king over again. Let's say he moves back. Well, guess what? We can confine the king with our king as well. As you can see, the king takes away this square, takes away this square, and takes away this square. So we can confine the king with our king as well. Now the king is trapped to this square here, this square here, this square, this square. Oops, sorry. This, 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 and this. Okay, not many squares. I guess you can go to these squares as well. But as you can see, sorry, this is my first time using these circles and the arrows, bear with me. But as you can see, the amount of squares that the king can go to are getting smaller, smaller, and smaller. Okay, now let's say the king goes here. Let's take away two of those squares that he had before, which were these two. He can no longer go to these two. Now the box is even smaller. The box is here and here. The box is getting really, really tight. Now here comes a critical move here. Let's say he moves back. Sometimes we don't make the accurate move, the most accurate move as possible. And we might get in a situation like this where it's confusing as to what we should do. Okay, now if we move our king away, here, here, or here, we just lose our rook for free. If we move our rook here, he escapes the box. So this is what we call a waiting move. Okay, so there's two waiting moves that are useful in this particular um, position. The first one is here. By moving behind the rook, we maintain our box, and we force the king to make a choice, okay? His choices are here, here, and here. Now, if he chooses to go here or here, we can make the box smaller by moving our rook here. So let's see what that would look like. He moves here, we move here. And now the box is here, and the box is here. Progress. Same thing, if he moves here, we move here. Make the box smaller here, and here, okay? If he moves straight back, what should we do? I'll give you a second to think about it. You can pause the video if you'd like. Smartest thing to do, is to confine the king by moving our king forward, okay? So again, when we see this configuration here, and we're the ones with the king and the rook, this is when we need to make a waiting move, okay? The other waiting move that can be useful is just dropping the rook straight back. If the rook king moves over, we check. Actually, that's not good. Don't listen to me, because if we move here, the king can escape. See, that's why we have to double check, guys. So the best waiting move would be to just move the king to the left. And we make progress no matter where the king moves. OK? 
Okay? So we make progress no matter where the king moves. All right, so let's say he chooses here. We, we move here, he chooses here. We make the box smaller. He moves back. We can go either way. Let's, let's go this way to make it interesting. He attacks our rook. We come up with our king. He moves back to the back rank. Now he's totally confined to the back rank. He's totally confined to this square, this square, and this square. As you can see, he's totally confined to these three squares. All right. Now let's say he moves here. All we need to do is bring our king forward. We can find him even more. Now he's just confined to these two squares. As you can see, throughout this entire process, let me back up before I show you the, the checkmating sequence. The entire process, the king and the rook never get too far away from each other. As we can see, guys, the king and the rook never get too far away from each other. That's very important. Okay? They never get too far away from each other. It's very important. Then we get to this situation here. Now, as with our previous example, we have to avoid stalemating our opponent. So the last thing we would want to do is move here, make the box too small that he's not in check and he can't escape, which would be a stalemate. So even though he has no legal moves, he's also not in check. So that's a weird combination. I can't move anywhere, but I, I'm not in danger either, and it's a draw. We don't want that. Instead, we bring our king over, making sure he has at least two squares he can move to. Okay. He moves here. This is where we use what we call a waiting move. Okay. Again, if we move back, then we just shuffle back and forth. We're really not making any progress, so we have to find a better waiting move. So we're in this position here. We find this waiting move here, which maintains this side of the box here. The king takes away these squares here. His only option is here. And then we checkmate the king here. The rook takes away these squares. And the king takes away these squares here. That is what we call checkmate using the box method and the king and the rook. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you for bearing with me with my technical difficulties and my inaccurate move. Um, but using the box method, you will be able to checkmate anyone in the world using a king or rook versus a king. So if you get this material in balance at the end of your, your game, using this technique, you'll be able to beat anyone. Thank you very much for tuning in. Again, I'm Terrence Washington, president and founder of the Orlando Chess Club. Thank you so much for watching.